Guys, it is hot in Germany. Outside is 36 degrees. I can't have a fan on here while I'm recording. So I'm melting away. So I thought this is a perfect time for a really quick, quick tip. And I'll try to make this really quick without melting away. So what I want to show you are two things. On the one hand, instancing in Redshift. This time another way than using the instance of workflow. And also to build something to instance onto. Let's just build a quick point advection. And let's advect this with a smoke sim. So Let's first build the smoke sim by dropping down a geo and in here I'm gonna use a torus just as my emitter shape. Just scale this back to say 0.3. And then on the one hand I wanna add normals to this. This is relevant for later, not now. And I wanna turn this into a standard old school volume using the ISO offset. Gonna set the sampling divisions to 100. Gonna give it a name called density like this. And that should give me a volume and it does that. Okay, let's append a null here. Call this one out underscore vol for volume. We're in the volume here. Next, let's drop down a dot net and let's build our basic smoke simulation. Highlight this, dive in there. Gonna drop down a pyro solver, which will be the central element solving the smoke. And this of course needs a smoke object and also a source. I'm gonna use a source volume here. And that goes in there like this. So let's first dial in the resolution here. Division size of 0.2 is a bit coarse. Let's set this to 0.02. And in my source volume, I want to reference my volume that I built here. Let's just click on the out underscore vol null here. Hit accept. And what I want to do in the sop to dot bindings, that's where all my values that I need for simulation are going to be created. I want to, on the one hand, bind the density to the density. And then I want to bind the density to the temperature as well. And I don't want to bind anything to the velocity field like this. Let's hit play and we can see something is happening. However, that's a bit slow. Let's completely get rid of the velocity field. That's better, but it's going to get truncated here because of this bounding volume for my simulation. So I need to add a resize fluid dynamic. I'm going to wire this in the pre-solve here and then in the max bounce tab, uncheck clamp to maximum size. So this should grow indefinitely. And it does. Sim times are not that great and it's getting even warmer. So I'll just resort to dialing up the division size, thus decreasing my volume resolution. Yeah, and that's a bit faster. However, that's very symmetric. So let's add a bit of noise to break this up. Let's do that in the pyro solver under shape. Let's just check turbulence here. Leave it at the standard settings for now. We just need something to advect our particles with. That's looking a bit better. Of course, you could tweak this, but the point here is just to have some simulation to advect our particles with. So what I like to do, and of course, this might not be standard workflow, and of course, I'm open to suggestions, so please comment. Uh, I'm going to drop down another dot net here. Now let's just put this to the pyro here and wire in my normals from my emitter geo in the other dot net here. Dive in there. And in here, I want to build my particles. So on the one hand, I need a pop solver, particle solver. I need a particle object, pop object. And I need a source where to spawn my particles onto. And I'd like to use my first context geometry. That is, and let's get back to frame one. That is the torus with the normals that I piped in. And I just want to scatter them onto the surface. So when I hit play now, I just got particles appearing. So let's advect them using the pop advect by volumes. Just wire this in between here. And what I need to select here is my velocity volume that I'd like to use for advection. And what I'd like to use is this dot net's output here. So let's just select the output from here. And when I dive into my smoke dot net, it's smoke object one, where all my values will be written to. So smoke object one will be my output object and I wanna access the velocity data. So when I middle mouse on this, I can see I got a vector field consisting of my velocity data. So back into my pop net here. I want to advect my particles with that velocity field. So let's just select that dot net here, field name vel should be fine. Let's hit play. We can see my particles will be affected by the simulation. Okay, first thing, build. That was quick, it's getting even hotter. So now that I want to instance something on this, of course I could use the standard 2 dne instancer and then inside merge the points where I want to instance something on and then select the geometry that I want to instance on those points. However, there's a not necessarily quicker but more direct way 
So we're going to use that. So with the particles coming out of my dot net here, they have a few attributes like the normal and the velocity. In order to make the instancing work in Redshift, I'm going to drop down a point wrangle. And in here on the one hand, I'll add a P scale just to scale them down a bit. And I'll also add a string and call it instance. And this should point to a node containing our geometry in the OBJ context, so in the upper context. So what I'll do is type slash OBJ and slash pig, which does not exist currently. So let's just check. So we created our instance string here. Okay, let's head up one level and create another geo. Call this one pig. Dive in there and drop down our pig head so that makes sense. Pig head is called pig now. And let's disable it, head to our Redshift tab, add a light dome. In the light dome, I'm just going to select some HDR for lighting. Add a camera by control clicking on the camera, lock that to the viewport. And onto my geometry, the particles, I added the Redshift OBJ tag already. That should be fine as is. So now all I have to do is click on the Redshift icon up here to set up my rendering. And in the Redshift IPR tab, I'll uncheck override IPR camera resolution and just click on the render view here. Oh, and I can see this is really tiny. So on the one hand, what I can do is, of course, zoom in here and you'll see bunches of pig heads flying around, or I can adjust the P scale value and scale those instances accordingly. What if you want to have different instances on different points? Let's close this, go back to our OBJ. And also instead of the pig, or let's just copy the pig, paste it there, call it pig one, copy it another time, call it pig two. And let's call our old pig pig three so that I have consecutive numbers one, two, three. Let's just exchange this here with a platonic. And this one with, I don't know, a torus, so that I have three different geometries in here. And now in my node where I set up the particle system, I'll dive in. And in the point wrangle, I will add to this string a random number, one, two, or three. So let's just generate this random number. It's an integer, call it rnum. And let's use our rand function and let's use a particles ID. Multiply this by three. And let's round this up with the ceiling function. And let's add this to our string using a plus and we have to convert it to a string first using the i to a function. And we want to convert our num to a string like this. Let's highlight this, head into the geo spreadsheet and let's hide all attributes, only show instance. So we can see we got instance names ranging from pig one through pig two to pig three. Let's go up one level and into the render view again. Zoom in a bit and you can see three different geometries. So that is a really, really quick and rather warm quick tip about how to instance and how to assign different instance geometries using Redshift. Before I finally switch back on that fan, a big thank you to all of our patrons, especially Mohamed al Abri, Joseph Howard, John Coons, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol and Rob Bryant Jr. Thanks so much for supporting us guys. All right, it's time for me to grab something cold to drink. So see you next time and it's cheers and goodbye.